Hello, good afternoon, everyone. This is Marie with Your New School. We are going to get started very shortly. For those of you who are currently logged in, if you can please utilize the chat box and type in your full name, your full school name, and your school location. This is for attendance. Um, please do not abbreviate your school name. Um, a lot of schools have the same abbreviation, so I want to make sure that I am getting your information to the correct school. If you are from a school that has multiple campuses, please make sure you put down what campus you're from or at least the location so I know where to send your attendance. Also, please keep your microphones muted and your cameras turned off. This is going to help minimize feedback and static noise as well as hopefully keep the buffering to a bare minimum. So good afternoon and welcome. So again, for those of you who have just logged in, please make sure that you utilize that chat box and that you are typing in your full name, your full school name and your school location. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes. Um, I'm trying to see if Vu is on so I can give him control. But I don't think he's logged in yet. So again, attendance information needs to be your full name, your full school name and your school location, especially if you are from a school that has multiple campuses. Also, please double check your cameras and your microphones, make sure they are turned off. This will help minimize feedback and static noise. Hello, Vu. I see you're logged in. Hang on, let me make you co-host. Let me find your login. Why can't I find your login? I don't know. I don't even see my video or anything. It doesn't show that I'm sharing a video or anything. There you are. Hang on. I'm going to make you co-host. So in a couple seconds, it should show that you are the co-host. Let me turn my camera on. Hello. Okay, so I made you co-host, so you should have full control to share your screen and share whatever you want to share. Okay. Um, I've never used Zoom before. I've used uh, Microsoft Teams. I can't see anything here. It says that I have a video, but I don't see any video. Okay, so I can see your model and now I see you. Um, I'm gonna try to make you the spotlight video so that your screen is the only screen that has an app, like the only screen that anybody okay. can okay. see. Okay, I see myself now. Yep, so I've made your video the spotlight video. I'm gonna turn my camera off um, so that there's no glitching because sometimes with all the number of participants, the glitching tends to be okay. overwhelmed. And then I'm gonna just make some more quick announcements and then I will turn control over to you. Awesome. So good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Marie Strauch. I am the educator with your new school. Today I am so excited to introduce Vu from Nail Alliance. He is 
the Global Dean of Education for Nail Alliance, and he's going to be presenting the sock dolls to everyone this afternoon. But before he gets started, students, please make sure that you are utilizing the chat box and that you are typing in your full name, your full school name, and your school location. The chat box is the only thing that saves when I log out. So I want to make sure that I'm getting your attendance to the right schools. Um, so again, it needs to be your full name, your full school name, and your school location. Also, please keep your microphones muted and your cameras turned off. That's going to minimize feedback and static noise, as well as keep the buffering to a bare minimum. If you have any questions at all during the presentation, please type it into the chat box. I will keep an eye on the chat box and I will interrupt you, Vu, if there is a question. So I will man the questions for you if there are any. Um, so again, please make sure your cameras and your microphones are off. And without further ado, Vu, I turn the controls over to you. Thanks, Marie. Hi, guys. I'm Vu Nguyen. I'm an educator with Jellish, and I've been doing this for a really long time. Uh, luckily for me, I've had the chance and opportunity to work with the Jellish soft gel tips for a few years now. Yeah, a few years now. We've been working on this project for a couple of years. It's taken a long time to get to where we are now. And really excited to show you guys. So I'm gonna flip my camera around so I can uh, kind of show you guys what's going on. All right, let's see here. All right. Does that seem pretty clear to you guys? Does that look right, Marie? Or do I need to hit? That looks good? Looks good to yeah, me. Yeah, it's perfect on my end. All right. Well, that's great. It's great that it works. I'm, first time I'm using uh, Zoom. So we've used all the other platforms, but we've never used Zoom before. So a little different, but um, I'm, as long as you guys can hear me and as long as you guys can see, happy with that so we have soft gel tips i'm going to go over the product knowledge with you guys first before we get into doing the actual demo part and as you guys can see here there are five total different shapes for soft gel tips and what is soft gel tips exactly soft gel tips is a full coverage clear tip that actually becomes your nail um some people, when, when we first came out with these, some people were thinking that it was just something like a press-on tip. Actually, we don't even use the word press-on tips because it's so different. And it's something that's gonna actually last up to 21 days. Right now we have these five different shapes here on the, the packaging itself. You'll see that there's a little slip cover here. And on the slip cover, it'll go over the five different shapes. First, we've got short round, then we have medium round, we have medium coffin or and uh, long coffin, and then long stiletto. So these are like some of the exotic shapes that, that were out there and really popular all around the world. And it took a special artist to be able to create some of these shapes. And what Jellish has done is they've made everybody at any level, given them the skill to be an exotic shape sculptor. So instead of sculpting these exotic shapes, they're gonna be perfect each and every time. This is the fastest and most professional nail enhancement ever made. So it's super fast. There are some support products I'm gonna go over with it. Um, one of the things that really make this special is that it's not made of ABS plastic. Like some of the other full coverage nail tips that are out there in the market, it is not ABS plastic. And the reason why is because with uh, some of the support products that we use, tip primer and soft gel tip adhesive, some of those products can cause ABS plastics to kind of micro fracture over time, which means they get little tiny cracks over time and eventually start to break down. So we're not allowed to talk about the, the materials that, we, that were used to make soft gel tips, all I'm allowed to say is it's not ABS plastic. So, and you know, with these companies, they're very, very secretive about the ingredients that they use to make this. Um, 
It is a light speed application. These are all pre-shaped and ready to apply. And you'll see the steps here. We're going to basically apply your tip primer on the natural nail and on the underside of the soft gel tip. And then a very, very cool thing we have here as well is the touch LED light. So I'll get into this later. So the touch LED light is going to flash here the soft gel tip while you're holding it in place. And then you're going to do a full cure under an 18G LED light or a full size LED light. So with this little guy, it just keeps the product in place. You could do some cleanup if you need to after using that. But once you go past a certain point, there's really no cleanup. So these are the five different shapes that we offer right now. Uh, I just got the phone with Danny and we are working on doing other shapes. So I know that there's a huge demand for these right now. And these are amazing. When you guys talk about making exotic shapes, uh, creating a long stiletto nail or a long coffin nail and making it perfect every time is so difficult. It's so hard to do. Even for someone that's been doing nails for 20, 30 years, getting a shape like this perfect every single time is near impossible. It's so hard to do. So if you guys have any questions, Marie, if you need to stop me at any point, feel free. I'm going to go into some of the support products. So some of the support products we have is going to be, we also have them in two different kits. Let me show you the first kit. It's the basics kit. These are the mini sizes. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are using these in school, but they do have this kit available for those that just want to give it a try. It's kind of just starting out. You're not sure this is something that's for them. I'm sorry. Sorry, I just muted somebody's microphone. Oh. Um, and then we would have the tip primer and the gel tip adhesive. What you see me holding here is the duo pack. But I'm going to open it up. Take them out. There you go. So these are very, very special products that are with Gelish only. So with Gelish, they have these two products here that are the support products for the soft gel tips, but they're very familiar products. If you guys are familiar with the Gelish products, the tip primer is very, very similar to Probon which is a non-acid primer. The tip primer itself functions that way too, like a, uh, like a nail primer, but it goes on to the natural nail and the tip itself, which I'll show you guys in a demo later. So this has the same technology that you'll find in the Probon that Jellish has been using for many years. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are already using it. This here is the soft gel tip adhesive. This is the product that gets sandwiched in between the natural nail and the soft gel tip itself. So this is the filler product, but this is also very special because it's also sharing a technology with a product that you guys are very familiar with, foundation. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are familiar with foundation. It is the industry's best selling base coat couple reasons why it's the best selling base coat is because it soaks off very fast and it also provides great adhesion. So two really great things um, that we have here and they have the technologies from two other previous really great products. Now are these products exactly the same as these? No, it shares some of the technology but is not exactly the same. Okay, they're formulated to work with soft gel tips. I'm going to take the soft gel tips back here for a second because I want to go a little bit into some detail about what makes these tips so special. Um, one of those is FlexiFit. And what FlexiFit is, it's the strength that is built into these tips. I'm going to take one of these out, for example. This is a long coffin. I'm going to stop you for just one second. Okay. Your camera is... So the picture is beautiful. It's crystal clear, but you're on, you are vertical as opposed to horizontal. <laughs> Does that make sense? 
let me see if I can change that. Should be horizontal, right? Um. So it would be, Sorry, it I would didn't... be as if we're looking at you from the from the side. Oh, this is so maybe, tilted. If you can't rotate your camera, it's not a big deal. <laughs> I'm trying to tilt it. Maybe I have to put my phone vertically then. For you to see it, oh, it's horizontal. But let me try changing my camera view. All right, let's see. Let's just put this here. Take this off. So if I put the camera, let's see. If it's like this, that would be then that's vertical now, right? Oh, that's okay. perfect. That's not correct though for my yeah, end. Perfect. No, I can't keep it like that because it's not mounted like that. Oh, Let me try something okay. out. No, 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 don't worry. Go back to the way it was. It's not a big deal. We will be able to, we will make do. I think I might be able to get, get it for you guys here. It's gonna be really awkward though. No, that won't work. That's not going to work, guys. I'm sorry. Um, no, don't worry about it. This is set up for widescreen, not vertical. So. The way it was, it was better. All right, so I'm mounting it back <laughs> the way it was. Uh, I would love to be able to see if I can get it like this. Maybe if I just let it sit there like that. And not touch it. Would that work out? The way it was at that the beginning, it was better. Is that okay? Yeah, that is. It's fine. It's totally fine. Because actually, this phone might fall. It's just sitting on top of my stand. So, uh, do you want me to zoom in a little closer? Yes, please. All right, this is yes. dangerous. How's that? Perfect. That's perfect. Honestly, Boo, it's perfect. So don't worry about it. I'm going to mute everybody's microphones. So you are all good. All right, we're set. We're clear. Perfect. All right. OK, so going on to this, the tip itself, guys, is if it's a feature that we call FlexiFit. And what FlexiFit is, it's built-in strength right onto the tip. And I know you guys can't see it here, but I'm gonna bend the cuticle area and you'll see how it bends and it's flexible there. But you see where it's not bending right here? And I'm gonna turn it over. And that's because the, these tips are specially made to be thicker here. And once you, you'll see it taper off right here and it'll get super thin around the cuticle. That was designed that way on purpose. So like you'll see the free edge is a lot thicker than the cuticle area. And that gives the tip strength from the apex all the way to the free edge, and then gives flexibility right around the cuticle area. And it's nice and thin here too, so it goes right onto the client's nail, and it's nice and thin. With this, being, having that strength, these will last up to 21 days, and it pretty much becomes part of your nail. People think of press-on nails and think that you're just going to stick it on and then a couple of days later, it's going to come off. That's not the case with the gel soft gel tips. With these, it's more of a, I'd like to say a permanent or semi-permanent nail that you put on and it's the perfect nail each and every time. The only time it's not perfect is let's say we put it on crooked like this or if we put it on wrong. Um, and it's kind of hard to put it on wrong. It's very simple to put on, and I'll show you guys that in the demo. The final support product that we have with the Jellish Soft Gel Tip is going to be my favorite product here is the Touch LED Light. One of the reasons why this is my favorite support product is I'm pretty sure some of you guys have already tried a full coverage tip and you, you tried keeping it on 
and the pressure you put on that nail with your tip, this pressure, that motion right there is so important that you keep that pressure on there. The second you let go, you get all types of bubbles, you get, get the edges are going to get loose and you're going to get lifting. So that's why this product here is so important. It's completely portable. You see, I have one right here. It's completely portable. And you're, you're going to need two hands to hold that nail on there. So this has a touch feature. So you see, I just touched that metal rim here and it turns on. So you touch it and it'll activate the light. And that's what's so really cool about this. It's so important. And when I show you guys the demo part, you guys are going to understand exactly why the touch LED light is just so important. And here's a couple of key features about the touch LED light. Let me zoom in here. It's got a micro USB. So most of us have this charger. We haven't used this type of charger in a while. It might be sitting in your desk drawer, but it has a micro USB to charge and it does come with the, the micro USB. It's got a battery indicator. It tells, it lights up when it's plugged in. So you know if it's charging or not. The touch feature is by far the best thing about it. It's got an on and off switch so you can tone it on and off. And here are the cure times. So with foundation, it's a five second. With soft gel tip, it's also five second. And with nail art. So you're using this for five seconds to flash cure most of your stuff. I use a lot for nail art as well. A couple of the key features, touch activated. It's rechargeable and it's ergonomic 360 degree freedom. You'll see the coil here. You can just move the coil however you like. Someone like myself, I like it to work with the light a little low and you could customize it to however you want it to sit, whether you want it high or low. It's got a heavy base that won't tilt over and stay put. And it's very small. You see the footprint it takes, it doesn't take up a lot of space. So it doesn't require a lot of table space. It does have a 30 second timer on it. So it will stay on for 30 seconds once you touch it and it's activated. We said earlier, the battery charge indicator lets you know that's charging. This will have a 24 hour battery. So once it's fully charged and we recommend that you guys do fully charge this before you use it, it does have a 24 hour battery. It means you can use, I've used this one for weeks without recharging it. It's got the USB cable included, that micro USB. And this coil is, see, I can bend it all around. It doesn't, you can have so much freedom with this. And it also sits very nicely right next to the 18G unplugged. So I got my 18G unplugged and it will just sit right beside it just like that. So goes hand in hand for those that use their 18G. Let's see what their client's hands and they're doing they're resting their hand here. They can always use this touch LED to support it right there. And it works great. So you guys have any questions so far? Anybody have questions about the products, about the lights? I've already used this and have some questions about your experiences using this. Yeah, I've got a gelish unplugged. Um, mm -hmm. But somehow when I'm trying to cure it for five seconds, the flashlight, uh, the flash curing, um, I don't know, some, it, it doesn't work for me. I had to cure like 10 seconds, but it says like five seconds. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. And are you using this to do your yes. flash cure? Yes. Okay, so when you're using this, it's very difficult, right, to... Um, to kind of hold that client's nail and keep maintain good pressure. What I found that when you're using the 18 G in order, and this is another reason why I like the touch led so much better. Cause you, it just makes your life so much easier when you're trying to, especially do your applications. What I found that if you're trying to, if you don't have the touch led and you only have this, you're going to need to take a couple boxes like this. And you're going to need to take, remove the tray from underneath your 18G. You need to remove that tray and you'll need to set up something like this. 
can you guys see that I have these two boxes underneath my 18G? And now I can have my client bring her hand under and through. And that way I can work with it and maintain that pressure. But there's a spot on the 18G that is basically a sweet spot. It's the spot right here, that, that bumper right here. That's the spot where most of your hearing is focused at. And so that you're going to want to hold that client's finger all the way back there. It's very difficult. It's very uncomfortable. But that's going to be the best way you're going to be able to get that to flash cure and work correctly. And where can we get this, the light, the lamp? The touch, this touch LED yeah. should be available, um, I believe, January. So pretty soon. It's, How about and they sold the out products? super when, quick. When will all of the products be available? I know that these four tips are available right now. The only one that's not available right now is the short round. And the short round is going to also be available in January. So I know these two items will be available in January. They were available for a very short period of time. And from my understanding is that everything is sold out and they're waiting to get more. Are those kind of tips that like can be compared to the Apress uh, gel extension? Actually, the, these tips, I'm going to sh share a little secret with you guys. These tips are partnered, we partnered us. They're the ones that helped us make it. But these, there's something a little bit different about these. These have an additional size. So we have 11 sizes where the appraise will have 10. And you'll also get 550 tip nail tips instead of i think theirs is like 500 so you get more and you get more sizes than a priest and i understand that with a priest the way you apply them is also very different they have a flashlight and this flashlight i've seen a lot of people have to since you need two hands to actually apply these you need to hold the client's finger and the other hand needs to hold that pressure they're using the flashlight in their mouth to cure these. So don't need to use your mouth. Having a touch LED will definitely save you time. Or if you saw what I did and elevated this and removed the tray, that will also work, but it's just very difficult. And it's just a lot of hassle to try to get it to work like that. So any more questions? We had one question asking, um, I was wondering if you had any tips for self-application, like to get it straight, would it be better to lay your hand flat or do a grip motion facing you? I would do it facing me. Like I would hold the tip itself facing me and I would have that light at a comfortable height. Let's say that's a comfortable height for me to work at. Let me change, I'll fake it a little bit so you guys can see. I would hold it like this, press down, and then use my own finger. I didn't have it turned on. Use my own finger to turn it on and activate it and flash care. And then I would count to five seconds because it doesn't have a timer or a counter. And then I would turn it off. So I would have facing myself. Like this would be just so much easier for me to have it facing myself and doing it that way because if you're doing it this way it's very difficult to maintain that pressure well and working at that angle and then trying to come back here and turning that light on and so for me definitely facing myself with that any other questions i don't see any yet all right well cool um if you guys do have some more questions please feel free to, to go ahead and ask us and uh, I'll make sure I answer your questions as much as I can. Um, when it comes towards the prep, I'm gonna go ahead and start with the demo here. When it comes to the prep, it's very, very similar to any uh, enhancement prep. But the first thing we're gonna do here is Curex. We're gonna hand sanitize and 
should be pretty self-explanatory. Okay, we're gonna hand sanitize. I'm also gonna do it. Are you guys already using Curex? So Curex is a it's a different type of hand sanitizer. There's no alcohol. And so someone like myself, I, I work out in the yard a lot and I work on many things. My hands get cut up a lot. This doesn't affect with it not having alcohol. It doesn't give me any burn. It's a lot easier to transport. And it just kills 99% of the germs without any of the burning. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and take my client's fingernail here. She's sanitized. First thing I'm going to do is cleanse her nail really well. I'm going to go ahead and take nail surface cleanse. And cleanse the surface of her natural nail. I actually have a shine on her nail. There's a top coat on here already. But I'll just slightly buff that. What you really want to do on a client that has a long free edge like this, you would want to shorten it down. I can't do it on this client because uh, she's going to be a model for a couple other things we have. So you would really want to take your file on a regular client and you'd want to take a file and really shorten almost all of that free edge. Just in case when that grows out, you won't have this awkward shape free edge on the, in the middle of your nail. So can go through the motions of this, like I'm filing and shaping that free edge. And then I'm gonna push back the cuticle. I'm gonna use our spoon pusher here, push back the non-living tissue and I'll turn it around and detail it. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna show you guys two different nails and two different nails. Turn over in detail. And then we're going to cleanse again before we buff. And I'm going to remove the shine off her natural nails. I'm going to take my buffer and remove any of the edge off my buffer. I'm going to use the 100 side of the 100, 180. And we're just going to remove the shine off the natural nail. So once the shine is completely removed, we are ready for an application. <coughs> okay. Super simple so far, guys. And so far, this is everything that you guys are used to or that if you guys have done any enhancements before, this is very, very similar to any enhancement prep. Cleanse again, get rid of any dust. At this stage, we want everything super clean, super dry, no oils, no lotions, nothing on her. And that's what that's exactly what we want right there. Then we're going to get into our pH bond. And pH bond is going to be our pH balancing agent as well as our dehydrator. So I have pH bond here. I'm going to go ahead and apply that to both of these nails. And pH. All right, so now the nails are dehydrated, they're oily. Everything is very familiar up until this point because this is where things get a little different with us. Um, and the thing that gets a little different is the tip primer. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys really easily how we line these up and measure these up. I've done this model several times so i already know her sizes pretty well and i'm going to show you guys here what makes this different is when i line up this tip you'll see that the cuticle area doesn't fit perfectly with her and so what i have to do is i take the tip and usually i will just slightly push with the tip around that cuticle area and that will help me shape that cuticle area a lot so after i have her size up with that. I'll pick my other size too. One thing I forgot to tell you guys is that I have um, a list that I make for all my models and I know all their sizes. 
and that really does help a lot. Um, I know Jealous does have a file that they can send you guys that you guys can actually have forms that you fill out for your clients and know their sizes. Here's something I want to show you guys is when you put the tip up to the nail, you see how far her free edge is? It's up to the tip of my thumb. So that's how far I'm going to need to apply tip primer to that tip. And that's the one thing a lot of people I've seen so far that have used the product fail to do is that they'll put the product, the tip primer on the natural nail perfect. And they'll do this part perfectly. So they'll apply tip primer to the complete natural nail. But this is where I see a lot where a lot of people mess up is when you put it on the tip itself, you turn it over. And one really cool feature about the tip primer too, guys, is it does the etching for you. So you don't need to etch and buff the underside of the tip like I've seen a couple other companies have to do. But I've, the biggest mistake I see is people doing this to where they only put it up from right here to there. But the nail actually is all the way down to here. So they're not putting enough. And sometimes it can get, a, if it, you don't put enough, it won't adhere correctly to the tip. So make sure you go all the way down to however far her natural nail goes. So I'll be down there, right where my thumb is. That's how far you need to put tip primer. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing on this other tip. So see, I go pretty far down to make sure that it's covered. Next, I'm gonna position my light. And when I position my light, I like to position it to where it works really comfortable for me and where, where I hold the hand like this and I place the tip on, I can easily use her own finger to turn on the light. So I could just easily use her to turn on my light. And sometimes I'll cheat and I'll say, Abby, can you touch the light? And she'll just touch it with the other hand. If I'm in an awkward position and I don't feel comfortable, sometimes if there's a camera over my shoulder, and I can't really maneuver correctly, then I'll have her just touch light. But this is pretty comfortable right now. All right, the fun part, guys, to actually see it, I'm gonna to try to get this position to where you guys can see the actual application part. It's very important that you guys see it up close and I'm, I guess I gotta work a little higher so you guys can see. So I'm gonna position it a little higher. Let me get this out of the picture so you guys can see how we get this on a tip. Soft gel tip adhesive, remember I said earlier, is shares the same technology as your foundation. So it's got a lot of those adhesive properties to it. You'll notice that when I open this up, I'll pull the brush out. It's, it's gonna seem very thick. It's gonna feel thick too. That thick feeling is, is something really necessary. You really want it to be, you really, need a product that's thick or it's just going to flood the cuticles, flood the sidewalls, and it's going to get everywhere. I'm going to turn this at an angle so you guys can kind of see how I scrape. This is just going to be placed right here. And you're going to scrape a little bead right off the edge there. Doesn't need to be a lot. See that little bead there? There's nothing hanging over on this side. It's nice and clean. And now we're gonna go ahead and apply it. Hold it up there. I hope you guys can see this clearly. If not, we'll get it clear on the next nail because once you do this, it's a done deal. I'm gonna hold the, the tip at about a 45 degree angle. Oh crap, close. Running low on battery. Holding my tip at 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to get close to the cuticle but not all the way to the cuticle, right there. And then I'm going to slide forward towards the cuticle. As I'm pulling down, once I get to that free edge, that's when I turn on the light. And you got to hold this pressure here. So you see how right when it got to that free edge, that's when it stops. That's exactly how you want that. And after five seconds, you can let go. And then you can take a look at this beautifully done sculpted stiletto nail in a matter of seconds where that would take a long time to do if you're actually doing it with acrylics or with builder gels and you'd have to actually sculpt that out. 
that would have been a nightmare. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys again and go ahead and do the same thing. I wanna try to get this angle so you guys can see. There we go. Looking on my phone. Let's scrape that. Turn it over. Uh, if you if you need a little more, feel free to add a little more. Like I need a little bit more on this side, just a tiny little bit. So I just add a little tiny piece of that side. I think in the beginning, the hardest part is going to be trying to figure out how much you really need. All right, I'm going to hold this at about a 45 degree angle. Oh, I got. Am I getting? Got a bubble in there. It's all right. I'm gonna go ahead and hold that finger at a 45 degree angle, make contact near that cuticle area, slide forward. And as we're pressing down, we're getting ready to turn that light on. So I turn that light on once I'm near that cuticle area or the free edge area. And you'll see up close, I let go. And right now at this stage, if I had anything seeping out of the sidewalls here, or if I had anything seeping from the cuticle area, I don't, but if I did, I would be able to take a tool and clean up anything because it's only been a flash cure for five seconds. So if anything seeped out, you can go ahead and clean that up right now, okay? But if you take a close look here, we don't have any seepage. We do have a, a bubble-free application. Keeping out the sides. And when we hold the fingers at a side angle there, We've got perfect arch location, perfect apex. The only type of filing we ever really need to do is a little bit on this frayed edge right there on both tips. This right now, you can still maneuver around. You can still take off any soft gel tip adhesive that has seeped out. Once we do a full 60 second cure in here, here go ahead. It's permanent now. Now I can't, if anything, if there was any seepage or anything got, around the cuticle area, I couldn't clean it up now. Um, anything got off on the sidewalls, I had my chance to clean it up because now it's permanent. Once she takes her hand out, the reason why we use 60 seconds too is because of the, the comfort cure feature. It starts, the light starts off at minimal power and it gradually gets stronger as it goes. And so the client doesn't feel that heat spike and I'm pretty sure many of you guys have felt that and you guys know what that is. You don't get that same reaction when, when you go into a comfort cure setting. So comfort cure is what we recommend. It's something that will definitely help with the curing and also help with the heat spike. So great feature to have. Once that 60, 60 seconds is done, it's got five seconds left. I want to show you guys how tight this is on there. I'm gonna really pull her finger around and you guys take a look. This is how tight those are on. You see how the white inner nails, you see that? I'm actually pulling this really hard and they're on there. They're not going anywhere. So all you really need to do when you get to this point with the file, you don't really need to do much at all. What I like to do is just get that little bit of a frayed edge on both nails. And then I like to blend around the cuticle area. Now it's not completely necessary for everyone, but if your client is super picky about their cuticle area being perfectly blended, then I would recommend just very lightly going over that area with your file. Um, so that's about it when it comes to filing. When it comes to your finished part, there's a couple of different ways to finish. It depends on what project you're using to finish these. If you're gonna use a gel finish, or if you're gonna use a lacquer finish, depends on whether you need a buff. So I'm gonna use a gel finish on this middle finger. So I'm gonna take the shine off this tip. And once again, that's if you're doing a gel finish. Then here on the index finger, we're doing a lacquer finish. So I really don't need to remove the shine off that. However, if I had a client that likes to change her lacquer color often, then I would remove that shine off this tip. And then I would just put 
gel top coat over it. And then she can remove the polish however many times she wants to because now the tip is protected with a gel top coat. We're gonna go ahead and cleanse the surface now. We've had some people ask, can you fill this product? And we would only recommend filling it one time. Um, and people have asked what product do you use to do a fill? We would use the soft gel tip adhesive, but we also have the soft gel tip adhesive in another form, in a jar or pot form. So depending on what you prefer, how you would like to do your fills or how you would like to actually do your work, there's two different ways of doing that. Um, this is much more popular in Europe and Canada doing it out of a, out of a jar. Here in the US, I notice that we all love using everything out of a bottle here. All right, back to the finishing here. I'm gonna use this beautiful red stilettos in the snow. It's a new winter red that we have. And some, some people have asked in my last video, do you need to put foundation on for it to stick onto this tip? And no, you do not need to use foundation. If you would like to use foundation, there's no problem. That's just going to guarantee that nothing's going to chip. That's going to really stay there, but it's not necessary. So this is going to stick too, and it's going to work just fine for three weeks. The stilettos in the snow. One thing you'll notice too about this is that right around that cuticle area, the colors apply beautifully right around the cuticle area because it's already got that ledge um, and the, the shape of the cuticle area. Now, some people will need to tailor their cuticle areas. And if you're gonna need to tailor your cuticle area, that I would say that's one of the first things you should do is when you take a look at the client's nails, when you're sizing these nails up, that's when you wanna check to see if you need to tailor some of these cuticle areas. Now, this other nail is gonna be lacquer. So I'm gonna use Fa La Love That Color, also from the Winter Collection. Lacquer, not very important that we remove the shine off that tip. These are long, long stilettos. Have you ever worn nails this long before, Abby? No. <laughs> it's first for everything, right? Exactly. All right, let's go ahead and cure that. We're going to cure in here. We cure the lacquer. We're going to cure for 30 seconds. I'm sorry? Uh, do we cure the lacquer also or only jelly? Uh, the lacquer, no, you don't cure the lacquer. Uh, the lacquer is going to air dry, has no need to cure in the LED light. She's just putting that in there so that she can cure the red color. All right, so you can go ahead and take that out. I'll go ahead and apply my second coat of stilettos in the snow. So this is the reason why she went under light is to cure this gel. The lacquer doesn't need any cure time. And if you take a look, that's like the perfect shape, beautifully shaped. It would have taken me hours to get that, a couple nails that look this good and taking me seconds because it's just that quick, that easy. But yeah, we've been working on these types of nails for over two years. And it does take a long time to make a product perfect. So it took a little bit longer to get out. So take a look at both of these guys. Shapes are perfect on both of them. They cover great. Bring them up a little closer so you guys can see. Let's take a look. We're gonna go ahead and cure and they also have a great C curve. So I'm gonna show you guys that here. If you take a look, this also has a beautiful C curve, gives that strength. So when the nails feel like they're getting pinched, that will, re will re uh, reject any pinching and any folding down. So it's very, 
very strong. That's that flex in it. So very flexible here and very strong from the apex forward. Very strong. So final thing we need to do is apply our top coat. I'm not gonna apply top coat to that other nail. Let's apply it to this guy. So we're gonna apply our top it off. We've had a lot of questions about finishing and somebody yesterday asked if we can finish with dip. And um, I don't understand why you would want to do that unless you wanna make the nail a lot thicker. Um, I think the best ways to finish this is with a gel polish or a lacquer. Okay, so 30 seconds. Also gonna wanna show you guys how to, uh, you can, how to take these off, how to soak these off. Um, and also what's the recommended amount for reshaping these. So you can reshape them. We would recommend that, let's say this was my, my nail, I'll show it on her, a little easier for me to show on her than myself. All right, so 30 seconds is up. Let me just hit my head on the camera. Nail surface cleanse, lint-free wipe. We're, we're gonna go ahead and wipe this nail. All right, so finishing everything off with some cuticle oil. I have my Nourish cuticle oil I'm gonna apply on her. We're gonna massage in the cuticle oil. Okay. You guys take, wanna take a look at the C curve. She's got a, a little hard to see, but take a look. It's a beautiful C curve. Still low, it also has them, but you can't see it unless you turn it underneath and take a look. Perfectly shaped nails in a matter of no time, matter of minutes here can also do design work on top of this. I've seen some people do some design work as they're applying the tip where they're doing marbling at the nail bed. And there's many different, this is something so new to us that there's still a lot of playing around and still a lot of experimenting with it. So, so far what I have discovered when it comes time for removal guys, and it comes time to soaking off, that's where a lot of times where people will run into some struggles because um, they're just not used to this product or the material. So one thing about this product, when it comes time to removal, I would turn the client's hand over. I would take some toenail clippers and shorten right away, right at the natural nail. I don't know if you guys can see, but cut one side and cut the other side and just take that nail off, take that complete, that free edge completely off. So I've seen um, some people use these and I wouldn't recommend using these because when you press down, it's gonna push the two sides up and then it, it will pull the two sides of the, the two side walls of the natural nail causing some pain. That's why I would rather just use some good size toenail clippers and clip one side, clip the other side. Then you would want to remove all of the gel polish. I should charge my phone. It's a long time. And I can't charge it at this angle. Well, hopefully that holds. Yeah. Right. I like doing my removals with a with the go file. Hopefully it stays charged. Ah. So I don't know how if a lot of you guys are using an electric file for your removal, but I highly recommend it, especially with this product. Of course you can do it by hand, but I would recommend you use it with carbide bet. I'm gonna turn this up all the way. It's going at 35,000 RPMs right now. And your first pass right down the middle, get closer. You're gonna to wanna to remove The color, you don't want to remove her gel polish color.
completely. It should only take you a couple of seconds to remove her gel polish color completely. Once you've removed her gel polish color completely, I would go back and angle. I'm gonna show you guys the angle here. It's a little awkward. I would hit the free edge with an angle about a, about a 45 degree angle like this. And I'll show you what, what I mean. I'm gonna turn that on. And now that free edge has that slant to it, that slope to it. So later on, I'm gonna wrap this up, take a wrap. Oh, about to get the wrap, so I have to walk over to my other desk. And then I'm gonna get our official nail remover. That's the phone falling off from this stand because it's not mounted. Okay. <laughs> Pure wrap. Pretty self explanatory. Saturate your wrap. And we're going to put it on the nail. Wrap it up. Tuck under. In about three to five minutes. The soft gel tip itself, this itself will become soft and you can move, get, you can kind of pry it off. Still keep your e-file handy. And once again, guys, this is something so new that we're still playing around with a lot of different ideas on the fastest way to remove and um, just different ways of application too. So this is what we've found on has worked thus far, how I've been working with this for a long time and what really works for me. I don't know if you guys have already got to play around with it. If you guys got any ideas on removal, any ideas on using it faster, but this has worked really good for us. And Abby's been a model of mine for a long time now. She's done so many shoots. I'll borrow your other hand, Abby. We just actually took a set off from her yesterday, right, Abby? And you're wearing the medium coffin. medium coffin. And take a look how beautiful her natural nails are. Yeah, we put top coat on there, there's, but there's no red lines. There's no white lines. They're, they're beautiful. No damage to her natural nails. And how long did you wear those tips for a while, right? Like two, three weeks? Yeah, yeah two weeks. All right, so let's give it a couple more minutes. Do you guys have any questions right now? It's a great time to ask them while this nail is soaking. No questions, huh? That's good. So it's yes. Marie. I've been answering the questions in the chat okay. box um, since I know awesome. most of the answers to that. <laughs> um, do you have, uh, she, I've got a question. Do you only apply the adhesive to the tips or can you apply it to the natural nail? Um, we've experimented with, it, with doing it both ways. Put, um, we found that it was just a lot easier to teach people to apply it onto the tip and then the nail. But we don't really, you know, I haven't really seen any way of like, uh, if, it was, if it was compromised or putting on a nail first. So I think both ways will work fine. Um, the most important thing is figuring out how much to put on. And I think that after a couple of times doing it, you're going to figure out that you, you need to make some adjustments. And so in the beginning, for many of us, we put way too much soft gel tip adhesive and when we, in the very beginning when we were doing it and we put it on it was oozing out the sides it was oozing out the, the cuticle area 
and we were just using way too much product. So once we got to play around with it for a little bit longer, that's when we kind of figured out how much is the right amount. But we're still playing around with that idea of putting on the natural nail first and then putting the tip on and vice versa. But uh, we've decided that it was the best thing that we put on the tip first because that just seemed like the easiest way to really show it off. I agree. I think it's actually easier to apply it to the tip. You get when you're putting that pressure, um, you don't know if you have enough on the natural nail prior to the tip. Also, we yeah, have a one, question. If they want shorter lengths than what the tips come in, um, can you shorten them? Yes. I was just going to get into that about the shortening of the length of them. So what I would recommend when it comes to shortening the length of these is don't go past 25% from the free edge. So let's say the free edge is from here to here. I wouldn't go and cut 50% of it off. I do about 25% of it. So I would get rid of about that much. And then I would be able to shape that nail how I want because the more you shorten, the thinner this the free edge starts to get. And then you're starting to lose strength. And same thing when the nail starts to grow out, you're gonna lose some strength. So I would only recommend taking 25% off the free edge. And let's say she wants to go for more of a rounded and less stiletto look. I've already shortened it to how I to the 25% off the free edge. And then I'll just lightly shape this out. Something like that. Take a look. Not too much. Any frayed edges. We want to get rid of that. But yeah, if you shorten it way down to here, let's say I shortened it 50% or more than 50. Now, when you look at this, it's gotten thinner and it's losing some of its, its strength. And so you don't want to lose all that structure and you don't want to make that nail weaker than it needs to be. It's been about three, four minutes. I'm going to take this off and show you guys what this looks like underneath that wrap, right? The tip is going to be, to be able to push that tip right off, but the soft gel adhesive won't. It's still gonna be there. And you'll see right here, I'll pull off the rest of that tip and you'll still see the number here. Usually that area is very thin and I can get some, most of that product off right there. But I like to do a double um, soak almost where I wrapped it once, I removed any of that soft gel tip and now it's just the adhesive left. And that's why I said, keep your go file handy because this is where you will go back and thin this down a, one more time. You see my free edge is already thin so I won't need to hit the free edge, just everything else. And this is, since soft gel tip adhesive is very soft, it is very easy to just take your go file or your electric file and file and drill majority of that product off. Okay, it's pretty much it. You see it's thin down. And that's the best way I've found to remove. I will take that same foil wrap and just we put it on her. Sometimes if, if the, my, my full wrap isn't wrapped tight, then when I take off the wrap and I feel like it's dry, then I would rewrap it completely. But if it's wrapped tight and you're not losing any of the artificial nail remover, it hasn't evaporated, then you're gonna be okay to just put that back on. Um, after about five, 10 minutes, right around the cuticle area, all the edges, that would be the first place I, I start hitting it with the, with the um, pusher. So.
I did. Have you guys tried doing a lot of removals? Yeah. With this, or have you guys gotten to play with the product yet, Marie? I have played with it. Um, I have. I let my 16 year old daughter apply my current set that is on because I wanted her to try it since she's going to beauty school and she did a fabulous job. Um, I even tried to do a fill. Now, personally, the fill looked beautiful. I mean, it held up mm -hmm. beautifully. But I find if, if I were to do it again, I would just soak them off and do a fresh set because I found that I was spending more time trying to reshape them to look like they originally were. Yes. And, I could, and it took me more time. So yes. in my opinion, soak it off and do an, another fresh set. In, it's faster than doing a fill. At least for me, it was. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally okay. agree with you, Marie. I feel like it's just easier to soak off rather than reshaping the, the filled in area, reshaping the nail all together. Uh, this has spoiled us so much on not using a file. Like we use files so much less now when you're using a nail that's already pre-shaped, it's already got the perfect shape. You, you find yourself using this way less. So by doing a fill, you more rather than soaking it off and just applying a new set but we have had a lot of people ask about fills is one of the things that we've had to deal with and i agree with you i agree that it's just much easier to soak it off and apply a new one all right so we let's also see have a question mm -hmm. so a question just came up what do you charge for this service? And I know it's really new for my area. So no, I've reached out to a few salons and some of them had no idea what I was talking about. So <laughs> I don't, and I really don't know um, what, what do you charge for this type of enhancement? So with this, I would, I would feel out the area and I would see what my competitors are doing something like this. This is something very new and I've, I've heard from a lot of people around the United States that are charging full set prices and um, they're charging anywhere from 60 to $80. I've seen so many different price variations. I've seen areas where they're only charging like 50 bucks. It, it, it all really depends on the area that you're in really. And so it varies from location to location. So Thank I'm going to take this off and I'll show you guys where this is going to fall apart first and where you should kind of start with your pushing first. I would right here at the cuticle area. So you see right when I start pushing, it's peeling back and peeling off right around that cuticle area. That's where I would go for it first. And then I would just get that free edge and the sidewalls. So you see how you can get the free edges and the sidewall. and then take off the rest. And that's pretty much it for removal, guys. I mean, there's little bits like stuck it here, but you can just get that off with a buffer or a file. I'm gonna end up redoing these nails for her anyways. So there's still a little bit there, but not much. So that's this has been the easiest way that I have found to do removal. Once again, I am using a, a carbide bit though. And that's why it's, I'm able to make these passes without causing any heat. And I'm running my machine at 35,000 RPMs, the max it will go. So does make it so much easier to have an electric file. If you don't, I would do the same thing with a file, make sure to get that free edge as short as I can, whether I use these big nail clippers and just really trim and then file everything down, but you don't want to leave all that free edge on there. It's just going to be very difficult to put a wrap on. And then within minutes, it will become a, a bunch of uh, like sticky goop almost. And so it becomes very sticky and 
a little difficult to, to work around. So definitely want to shorten that free edge off first. So. so these, once again, I'll go over the products with you guys. So you guys can see exactly what we had today. We put on the long coffins on her, medium coffins, what you had on prior to today. Yep. Short round, not available yet. Those are gonna be available in January. Long stiletto, that was her other nail until we reshaped it and shortened it. We have our medium round. Medium round is also a very, very popular shape. It's what I wore for my engagement pictures. <laughs> oh, thanks. Yeah, you, I remember doing those nails. And so guys, to be honest, I've been, we've been getting so spoiled on the soft gel tips that I kind of forgot how to sculpt a nail now. I just you do these. Um, some of the support products that we use, also very important. If you guys are familiar with the pre's, they don't have these type of support products. Their support products don't have this type of quality and this level of adhesion that you would get out of your tipmer and that you would get out of your gel, um, your soft gel tip adhesive. And I think a lot of that, the reason why they, their products um, or some of the other products that you'll see out there that represent these type of products is the quality is not as good because they don't have what it, came, what, what it took to make it in the beginning. So this came from, from foundation. So it came from a really great source, something that's been trusted for a long time. And so that's why you get that really good adhesion and the removal abilities with this. Also, I always forget about the jar, having it in a jar. Some of you guys might love using it out of a jar. I particularly don't. I find myself being spoiled with using it out of a bottle. I have heard about people that when they do like the jar because they can control the amount of bubbles better. And I mean, it's like when you open this up, and you put the brush back in, once you take it out and you put the brush back in, now you're pushing air between the bristles into the product. And you, some of the people that like using it out of a jar don't have that problem. So, they have two different versions of that. Tip primer. And then my favorite one, the touch LED light. And you guys that have not used the touch LED light, you guys, uh, will be super spoiled when using touch LED light. Uh, it's the greatest thing out there when, because you'll see how important it is to maintain that pressure. Usually I do show how important it is. I guess I will show you guys too. So I'll take some soft gel tip adhesive. I'm gonna put it on a tip and I'm gonna show you on myself, like how I apply on myself. Put the product on. All right, guys, so here's my finger. Let me get all these out of the way so you guys can see. Let's get this product out and it will focus. Thank you, Abby. All right, guys, so let's take a look here. Here's my finger. I'm gonna go ahead and angle about 45 degree, make contact, slide up towards that cuticle area as I'm pressing down. And right there, it's perfect, right? That's exactly where I want it. I would like to, to cure. But let's say I didn't have a touch light and I had to go grab my flashlight and put it in my mouth. Once I take my finger off, there it goes. If I try to put it back on, now I got bubbles in there. Now I got these loose areas in the cuticle. So pressure, the very first time you got it is gonna be super important. And that's why I love having that touch LED light because you can maintain that pressure without releasing any bubbles into your product or having some spots that are loose and weak. So hopefully if you guys have any questions, I hope I can answer them now. That would be great. Any questions for us, Marie? I'm looking through a lot of it is on pricing and ordering, which we will reach out to all of our schools and let them know how they can order the products and get it into their schools. 
Um, we're just kind of scrolling through to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, I think Avery, we're it's Teresa. I just want to thank you for coming <laughs> on. Teresa, I've had a long pleasure time. working with Vu for years, and he is the <laughs> most talented nail technician on this earth, in my opinion. A little biased. You so Teresa, it's been a long time. I would love to. You cracked up a little bit there. What did you say? So I'd love to see you come back here and do the nails for you. Yes, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Next time you're in town. Absolutely. Do that. So I just want to really quick, um, just for the students before they log out, if you have not done so already, please make sure that you get your attendance information into that chat box. It needs to be your full name, full school name, and school location so that you guys are getting your credit for being on today's webinar. So please make sure you guys type that information into the chat box. Thank you so much. Our pleasure. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. And thanks for having me on, guys. You guys are awesome. It's always great to be on with you guys. I know you guys run such a great program. Teresa, your program is amazing. And your students are so lucky to be part of your new school. I think that <laughs> they're going to just, they're in great hands. You guys are in some really good hands. So thank you guys so much for having me on. It was an awesome experience, as always. Thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Yes, come back anytime. Thanks, Vu. Yes, anytime. Well, I did plan on doing a PowerPoint, but I didn't know how to do it using Zoom, so. <laughs> oh, I wish you would have told me. I could have done it for you. I already have one put together. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> Next time we'll do it. Next time, yeah. <laughs> well, if you guys have any students that have like, questions that you guys have a hard time answering, feel free to send it to me. I'm here all the time to answer your questions. So feel free to send it over, ladies. We will. We will. Thank you so much again. No problem, guys. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you guys so much. I hope everyone thank enjoyed you. the webinar and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right. Thank bye, you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, have a good day. All right, I will stay on for just a couple more seconds because I can see people are still typing in their attendance information. So I'll stay on for probably two more minutes. So if you have not gotten your attendance in yet, please do so before I log out.